What's up, everyone? Welcome back for a brand new edition of Collider Forces, an edition of the show that I'm very excited about because I have a guest who is the star of one of my favorite movies of 2022 and a movie that we are now talking about in 2023 for very good reasons. Amber Midthunder, Hello. welcome to Collider Forces. Thank you. I'm very excited to have you here. I'm so excited to this be here. This movie was in my top, did I even say Prey? Did I say Prey? Prey no. was in my top 10 of 2022. <laughs> I just they assume, know what it is. I just assume everybody knows exactly what's going on <laughs> in my head right now. So we've had a nice opportunity to chat a little off camera, but the only thing I did not tell you about is is this. I know. I don't know what that is. This is the Collider Forces Dice Tower. Okay. Soon soon it will officially be Collider Forces. We are working on that. Okay. I have eight random questions. You get three rolls on the tower, and whatever you roll, that's where we start at least. Ooh. So. Okay. It's like someone hit in there. You get the pretty <gasps> Spider-Man die. Oh, my gosh. I was complimenting this earlier. A is lot this of also a custom die? No, but I, I spent a considerable amount of time looking for the perfect one. People have so much fancy, like, die shakes. People, okay. <laughs> you need to roll a dice oh. tower. <laughs> I thought it was like a board game. Admittedly, okay, I didn't really know much about dice towers until I bought this. I've never right. used a dice tower. I've got a seven. Well, now, now, now you I have. And you have a nice, a nice easy question to start with okay. here. This is wrap gifts. What okay. is the most memorable oh. wrap gift you've ever received or given? Oh, oh, what a lovely question. Um, oh, man, I can't remember anything. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. The best wrap gift? The most memorable. Um, I remember, well, on this movie, um, I gave, I gave Dan... Um, a star quilt and I gave Jane a star quilt um, because you know that's like a thing in my culture to do what, and what is so, a star quilt a star quilt it's a it's like a I don't know it's like blankets and stuff like that it's like a traditional thing that we do and so I gave that to him because you know he did a lot for for that's this beautiful. and for the people um, so there's that one and that is what is coming to mind also I remember on Legion Dan would do really good like he would always get like people like custom gifts and he had like cards made and um he gave me like a legion like a custom season three legion um like bookend that had like i don't know if it was him or just a person who was like the books were like falling and he was like pushing it up like that it was very cool this does not it. surprise me yeah. to hear about him he strikes me as a very thoughtful person who yeah. would go to those lengths for a rap gift yeah. <laughs> i love it yeah <laughs> all right you got roll number two on the okay. tower I really want you to get one specific question. <gasps> Is it the one? Oh, wow. Oh, my That's God. I'm first. so bad at this. Never gotten stuck there. All right. We're sure. up to a number six. So this is this is my newest question okay. that I'm obsessed with because this happened to me while I was preparing for a recent interview. I'm calling this one Spider. Okay. And it's on the list because I feel like this says a lot about a person. Spider. You are home alone. You see a big old spider Dead. somewhere. What do you do? What do Dead. you do? Like you, you Done. dead, you dead it. Um, you kill yeah, it. Yeah, I dead it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I die a little bit inside. How big? I'm not a spider person. <laughs> okay. I don't like spiders. Dead, done, atomic gun, boom. Bang. <laughs> House gone, fine. As long as the spider is It's gone. like if there's a bug in there, you yeah. just burn the no, whole I'm thing. No, I'm not ground. a bug, a spider. I'm not about it. That was like, I went to Australia and Ooh. that was like my biggest thing. How about are you there. okay? I was terrified the whole time. <laughs> I was like, is it gonna because you know you see like on the internet the like videos of like a giant spider was hiding in the toilet and stuff like that. That I feel like <laughs> that's my so worst nightmare because I've seen things. so many of those. I've on seen TikTok. so many of those are like there's like scary ones, you know? And so not about it. I don't do spiders. Um, I don't like them. I get really scared. And then, but the goal is like, am I more scared of just seeing it in the moment and walking toward it? Or am I more scared of letting it live inside of my house? Yeah. I'm more scared of letting it live inside my house. So I am the type of person who likes to scoop it up and take it oh, out to nice safety. But if that goes, no. if that plan goes wrong and no. then I can't get it, I do lay awake at night thinking about where no, that where, spider might be. Because then you're fighting. Because then it's so mad at like, you. And then it's coming for you. You're bigger than it knows where you're sleeping. I just you know? hope it understands that I was trying to help it. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's the only thing. Not me right away. Battle. <laughs> okay. There's a war. All right, you have your third roll in the okay. tower. <laughs> oh my gosh, we should just roll all the questions. Okay. I mean, I can find excuses to bring them all back. I really want to get a four. Four. I like four. You get a four. What is it? 
You got a five, but I'll give <gasps> you four after. Um, five, actually, I really like. This is okay. an acting process question. Oh. I call it favorite, least favorite. If you could pick your favorite part of the acting process, putting mm-hmm. a costume on for the first time, seeing mm-hmm. the set, rehearsing, what would it be? But then I also want not necessarily your least favorite, but, yeah. you know, a part of the process where you see room to grow for yourself and try oh, something new. I like that question. It's just easy to call it favorite, least That's favorite. That's cool. <laughs> um, I think favorite is just the being in the scene like that. I think it's like kind of it just feels magical. You know, it's like. Uh, there's in, I mean not always the, and it feels different for different things but ultimately it's just like that feeling of when you're like you forget everything else and you're just so like you know you're just so present and you're just so focused on some you know it's an amazing thing that I get to do to be like oh and then now the only thing that's important to me in the world is that I have to you know get away from a predator <laughs> is like you know or or talk to this person or whatever like I, that to me is like the infectious thing about what I do that's why I do it um and where I could grow um is I think in the patients <laughs> there's a lot of different types of patients that are required um and I think you know this is where listen we're all human um I think that that's a space where I could grow it's just like you know if it's like on the day and things are taking a long time I think I just get like oh I just want to I just want to go um or sometimes you know we were just talking about this like predator took like we were basically there for like six months and it's like that can be you know to be away from your home and away from your family and away from did it for all that time it's like that can but obviously that's a choice that I made about being here so um I think just that being like accepting and and patient with that part of the process. It's like the, you know, the peel back the curtain process yeah. part of making a film is yeah. that many do not realize that, you know, it is not all doing exactly what you see on screen. Mm-hmm. See what you see on screen takes a significant amount of setup yeah. time where, you know, depending on your department, you're just sitting there waiting. Yeah. It was crazy for me to be like, we're spending you know, from, I say from the time we got there, it didn't, we didn't shoot for six months, but from the time we got there until the end, it was almost, I think it was five months. Uh, it's crazy to be like, oh, we're going to go to another country for five months to come out with something that will be 90 minutes. It's so crazy to me, but it's also so cool. I mean, that's like, you know, that's how much I think we all care and invest that time and care into it. 90 minutes, but then you have to multiply that by the amount of times people have seen them. I think I'm up to like probably like seven or eight times at this (laughs) point. And then on top of that, all the conversation that it sparks from (laughs) release until now and beyond. It is definitely it is definitely more than 90 minutes. Um, you know, that's I think. But it's just like it's so cool to me to also like be doing that where it's like, yeah, people. Because that's the other thing. You just don't know. You don't mm-hmm. know if people are going to talk about it. You don't know if people are going to be interested in it. And so it's like we invested so much care. And so it's nice that people, you know, I think felt that and are interested in that. We're going to get into some of those details, Mm. some of the care that went into it. But first, do you want question number four? Yes. (laughs) All right. Never done this before, but I am just going to randomly give you the dice question uh, you want. This is zombie apocalypse. There is a zombie outbreak. Okay. You can pick two past co-stars to team up with. Oh, my God. This is a great question. Who do you choose that will give you the best chance of surviving? Of of my co-stars? Not their character. No, not the character. My co-stars. Okay. Um... Oh, I'm like, who has good skills for survival? I mean, I've never worked with my parents, but honestly, I really trust my parents in an apocalypse. Um, I'm the exact I opposite. Really <laughs> I think they would. I think my parents would try to help, but my yeah. dad would be the kind of person who just accidentally drives us in the direction where like the ground is going to cave oh, no. in or something. <laughs> and my mom would just give up. She that's would just so up. she would just be like, take me. She'd there. just be like, I'm not going to do oh, anything. That's so <laughs> no, I feel like I trust my. I think my parent, my parents would fight it out. I think they would survive. Um, okay, but I haven't really worked with them. So <laughs> who? Okay. Um, da, 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 da. I'm like, what have I done? Um, okay, I would work. Oh, Liam Neeson, obviously. Good choice. Duh. Good How could I have forgotten about him? Um, Liam Neeson, just because, you know, I feel like even zombies respect that. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Gotta walk away. Um, and then I think maybe, oh, Seti, the dog. 
You couldn't have chosen a better pairing there. I take that very seriously. I took that question very seriously. I wish there was an Emmy category for best <laughs> on screen, like movie, like dog, dog animal, anything, yeah. because we would she have would an sweep. instant winner. She would sweep. So it's good. true. It's funny because, you know, she just is like, I think Dan said it, and it's true. Probably every usable frame of hers in that movie, which is hilarious. <laughs> Uh, but you know, she ended up, she's great. She's in a, you know, her process wild, but the it product works. is incredible. It works. All right. We have hit the main part of the interview here. We okay. like to go back to the very, very beginning. What is the, the movie you saw, personal experience you had, you name it, that first made you say to yourself, I have to be an actor and nothing else. Oh, oh my gosh. Um, there was not a specific one moment, but I was just telling you about this. I remember being little and I saw Narnia. Uh, the Chronicles of Narnia and I was walking out of the theater and just like I think it is the first time that I remember consciously really feeling like the like the movie was still like around me you know like I walked out of the theater and I was like <gasps> like I just remember thinking like everybody knows about the you know like everybody knows the rules of this world and the thing in the you know that like the the half man half animal thing is gonna walk in here and just that kind of thing like it just felt so real um and I think I just loved, you know, I was too young to understand how to like accomplish that as an adult, but I just, I felt it and I loved that feeling uh, is where I remember that happening to me for the first time. And then I think as I got older, I was like, oh, filmmaking is cool. <laughs> it's a, a beautiful answer. Yeah. So you decide you want to be an actor at yeah. the time. What did you think was step one to building a career as an actor? And now looking back, would you recommend that as a first step to someone else? Or did you find oh something more effective along the way? Great questions. Um, well, my parents work in the film industry and they, but it's like, it was just not even a thing. You know, it was not even a conversation with us in our family of like, this is what we do and you could do it too. Or, you know, like I think they were very intentional about specifically not talking about it with me. Uh, I mean, I grew up around it. Like I would go to my mom's casting office after school and like, you know, I would be doing my homework, but really I would be like watching the actors. And I just thought that it was so interesting. And like, you know, I didn't again, like totally get, like, I didn't think about like, Oh, this is what they do puts my dad where my dad goes to work. And then my, what my dad does is what gives me like, you know, Lizzie McGuire. Like I did not connect those dots. Um, but I did think that it was just like fascinating to like watch people, you know, come into like a very mundane room and then bring with them this like the whole story and all this magic. And, and then when they would leave, it would leave. Like I thought that was amazing. Um, I have not answered your question what at all. What a way to describe <laughs> that process though. It was very cool. So, I mean, I think that I felt like the process was to get, representation um and that was the process so I would say yes okay. I think that oh my, what I was saying is that my family and I talk about like that there is like portals almost that it's like the way that people get into I think whatever they do especially like in sto the storytelling world it's usually so random and so chaotic that it's almost like a portal that only works once like, it's like you, the way it happens for you is the way it happens for you. And then it closes behind so you. Like true. it opens for you and it closes for you. And that's it. So I can't say like, have parents that are in the film industry that don't talk to you about it at all. And then, you know, homeschool for the last three years of high school, move to LA when you're 17, get a manager and then hope it works out. Cause that's what I did. And definitely that did work. And I think the steps of like, okay, working really hard and being dedicated and looking for rep good representation. I do think those are good steps. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I think it's really just tenacity. I think it's really just like having good discernment and recognizing like who are the good people around you, who are the real people around you. And, you know, just being really driven about it and just being like, OK, because it's hard. That's why I like to bring questions like that back for all forces mm -hmm. interviews, because everyone has a different experience. Yeah. Every path is different and, and every single path is OK because yeah. it works for you. Yeah. I mean, it's even your story that you were telling me of like crazy coming from film school yes. and producing <laughs> and being like, I don't want to produce. I want to do that. Like, <laughs> you know, there's not nobody's going to have that exact path again. Mm -hmm. But it did work. <laughs> yeah. And and like hopefully sharing multiple paths inspires someone to think that like their path, even though it may be different, exactly. is still right. It is. And I think that's the important part of it is like it is chaotic. 
And that's that is how it's supposed to be. I think that's the only consistent quality Mm -hmm. is that like it's not going to be exactly the same for everybody, but it is, I think, chaotic for most people. This is the chaotic. (laughs) And that is how, you know, and that's how it is. So that's how you get here. I wanted to go back to representation because I was reading another interview you had done where you had said when you first moved to L.A., you were encouraged to go after Disney Channel roles. I'm not sure if you had representation at the time, but you didn't. I did. You did. Yeah. In that case, this question can go one of two ways. <laughs> How did you communicate your personal interest to that team to encourage them to pivot their plan for you? And if not mm-hmm. that, how did you find the people in this business who saw eye to eye with you and you know you oh, knew could support you in what you wanted? Well, okay. I think that, I mean, I was 17 when I moved to LA to start acting. Um, I was, the, I think the first person in the state of New Mexico to have a legal 18 work status so that I could, you know, like work, you know, so that you can like work and not have like child hours. Cause I just knew what I wanted to do. And, um, I felt really sure about that. And so I had a lot of ideas. I think I always had really clear vision about what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be. And so it was pretty immediate that I was like, listen, I understand that the, logical move is to like put me on a Disney channel or whatever but I want Winter's Bone <laughs> like I was like I want to stop I saw her. you reference Jennifer Lawrence in another interview I I'm do. like I get it I love I get Jennifer it. Lawrence I do her, Jennifer Lawrence Viola Davis are like my two excellent choices when they there. did the actors on actors together I was like this is a personal <laughs> gift to me <laughs> I was like this is a present to me um yeah I mean I love them so I th- those are the kind of actresses that I admire you know so I was like from the beginning. So I was just very, I think I had, it's kind of funny when I look back on it. Cause I feel like I didn't really have legs to stand on to like be counting stuff out so early, but I just really knew like what I think was meant for me and what wasn't. Taking that mentality a step further. I, this is another question that I love asking when you did start booking roles. Do you remember the very first time that you spoke up about something, noticed that your voice was heard and being mm. taken into account and you were able to feel how you could change mm-hmm. like your character, the project overall and or the set environment? Yes. Yeah, actually, I do. Um, that was on Legion. That was like the first, you know, I had done like Lindell jobs before that and I had, I mean, even when I was like really little, I remember the first thing I ever did was like a DWI commercial when I was like 10. (laughs) Um, Because, you know, I was like, yeah, sure. I think I'm interested in this thing. And then I was like, I don't know about that. Um, But I was on Legion and it was really small. There was like an episode towards the end of the first season where, spoiler alert, if you have not seen the show. They've had a couple of years at this point. It came out a while ago. It's kind of your fault. Um, Where the like monster that was taking over Aubrey's character came into my character and it was like I don't know it was like fighting with Dan's character and I got like hit in the head and I remember just being like oh I want to have like blood on my hand and I didn't know like when to mention stuff like that like I was really afraid to like speak up you know because it's just such a big environment it's always so busy everybody is so serious at what they're doing. Even if it's fun, it's like, you know, everybody's very like serious, very focused. So I didn't like, didn't know when to say that. And I remember I had mentioned it to somebody, I forget who. And I was like, I just want to have like, like, I think it would be cool to have like a print, like a, like a bloody handprint. Cause then we like had a whole fight and there was like a whole thing. And they were like, okay, yeah. Okay. And I was like, oh, that's that and then they were like okay how do we and then they walked away and they talked to a lot and then suddenly a lot of people were working on this they came over and it and it didn't end up working which also I was like oh okay I had an idea and it didn't work and nothing bad you know like nobody died the show is still going it's fine um and I remember just being like oh even like something small like that like yeah you can just say it and like enact change like you know I just remember being like oh wow I can I can say things and then they can become real and that was really like very small thing but it was actually very I think powerful and understanding like that you do have a lot of agency it's so important and that's such a good example for something like that I wanted to reference something else that I saw in another interview you did this one I believe was with THR where you Mm -hmm. had mentioned feeling hesitant about pursuing indigenous roles Mm -hmm. wanted to dig into that a little with a with a two-parter to start here 
what sparked that hesitant hesitancy? That is a word I can say. <laughs> but then also, what what changed it? What reopened that door? Um, I think it was never like I'm not going to do these roles. It was always just that the I think the bar. I don't even think the bar was high. I think the bar was just normal and the content wasn't really up to standard. I think it's really just, that's what it's about. It's about like what that, that goes into the conversation of like, what is quality representation? And it's like, not a lot of what has been out there <laughs> is not it. Um, and so that's really what it was for me that I was like, I don't, you know, I want to be representing characters that I'm proud of or that I think are interesting or that are fun to play. And they're just, I think oftentimes when you get like a native character in something, it's very kind of like, it's just kind of one token character who's there to be like either really spiritual or really, really like violent. And then they're kind of, they're there and they're gone. And it's like, that's not, you know, or, and it's other people who are telling these stories also, like there's not, it's very rare to have, I mean, up until recently, which is how it should be, is that like, you know, now we have native voices telling native stories. And before it wasn't that case, it was like, we were this like thing in like a display box that people like wanted to look at and like copy paste. And we didn't get to have that same agency over, you know, what we were doing. And so it was really just that. So this gives me a perfect excuse to now teeter into prey because mm -hmm. I know I'm prey representing Comanche culture and the mm -hmm. lifestyle was top priority to yeah. get to get right, to get accurate. So what is like even a small but actionable thing other productions can do, no matter what culture mm. they're representing, mm -hmm. that you all did on Prey mm -hmm. to give us the end product we have now mm. that can enhance the way that they represent another lifestyle in the world. And involving the real people, you know, like even this, like Dan is obviously not Comanche, but he had Jane. We yes. involved the Comanche nation, like Comanche, the Comanche people did have a voice in this process and like in doing like the Comanche language version of the movie, like that was with the Comanche nation that was with real Comanche language speakers. And it's like, you know, and even on the movie, we had like an internship program for native people who, you know, wanted to like be in the film industry who could like get their hours working in like the unions there so that they could. And now like there are people who did that program who are in the union now who are working on movies. The industry. Yeah. That's, so it's like that's what that, it is. It's again, about that was their portal. It's about <laughs> adding more people yeah. from from various exactly. you know, parts of the world, so walks of life to yeah, this business. Exactly. So it's like if you're gonna tell those stories, like that's fine. You can be interested in that, but like you have to include you can't speak for other people. You have to include those people in Posi in positions that are important, you know, and in spaces that are like, OK, then produce it or then, you know, like include those people and make sure that they are the ones who are leading that storytelling. Oh, the way you all handle that on this production is really something else and a model that many others should be looking towards for your character now specifically. What would you say is the biggest difference between the Nadu that you brought to the audition space and mm. the Nadu that we now see in the finished film? Oh, um, I mean, I now know that it was a Predator movie. <laughs> that's well, important. That's a big thing. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think that it was. It's more like I think the the Nadu that was in the audition space was more like bare bones because I just didn't know anything, and I think that that was like a little bit of a. It was like and uncovering and I just had like little pieces of it you know like how there's the I don't forget what like great artist was like when they're sculpting that they're like the sculpture's already in there and I'm just uncovering it or whatever it was it felt like that where I was like oh, okay I see like little piece it you know it felt like like a hazy picture of like oh I, okay I think I see the framework of what this is but then you know getting to I think really like be in the movie with her all the time um it was just more, it's not necessarily a different person. It's just a more clear vision of that person. Can you give me an example of a time during the filming of the movie when something further came into focus? Because I feel like a mm -hmm. lot of folks out there might think like, you got to know your character top to bottom before you even jump into production. But sometimes you mm -hmm. find things along the way. It's both. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I think that like I put in a lot of thought into obviously like, you know, showing up prepared and that kind of stuff, like the preparation process to me is really important. And so it's that, but I think you're 
constantly discovering it. I feel like if you're not discovering more, I think that that's just normal. I think that like you always, by the end, you get to that and you're like, oh, can we redo some of the beginning? <laughs> um, like I had that on this movie, but I think there was a scene that's not in the movie that Dan and I both really clicked into that was with um, the little the little Comanche girl who is like, you know, who comes in and she's like, not his back, not his back. That one. Um, they're the Crowfoot family. They're really sweet. Hi, Crowfoots. Um, they, there's a scene where she's like, now she's like walking through, she's like walking through and that girl is there and she's playing with like a little, she's trying to string up like a small bow. And this was like before, like pre-hunt. And so she stops and I like get down with that girl and I'm like, oh, hey, you have to like clean this part. And I kind of like show her and then I have her do it. And I'm like, here, now you try. And then she does it and she like picks it up and she like does and she like there's this like little look and she looks so like powerful. And it, there's just this like little spark between the two of them that I think for Nadu is like, yeah, affirms like I'm going to that's why I have to fight for this. And for her, it's like, she's just this little like powerful thing. And Dan came to me after that scene and he was like, okay, whatever that was. And he like showed it to me because we were like, had the conversation like, do you want to watch stuff? Do you not? And he was like, I think it's important that you see this one. Cause I was like, I don't know if I want to see it. And he was like, you should watch it, watch it. And we watched it and it was like so special. And he was like, whatever this is, that's where this movie is from. Like that's that's the movie. And I was like, okay. And that was pretty early on. And that was cool. You know what the coolest thing about that is too, even though it was removed from the movie, I feel like those feelings reverberate yeah. throughout it. And then you're left with them in the end yeah. too. And that is just as special as a scene like that being in the actual movie. Yeah. And that's why I love too the moment at the end where it's like, she's, you know, they, you still get, it's different, but it's like, you still get that moment where like, she's looking at Nadu and Nadu's looking at her. And it's like still kind of, cause that is, it's like, that happened so early for us that that was still a part of the DNA of like what we were doing. That, that was like, it just felt good at the time. And he, and Dan was so good at like locking into things that he'd be like, okay, that thing, do that all the time. <laughs> oh, I have so many follow-up questions now. I'll go to Dan because you just brought him up and he is one of my favorite working directors who? in this industry right now. Yeah, really? Who? I love him. I, I, I love his work so, so much and him and his influence on productions like this. Can you give me an example of a time while shooting a challenging scene where, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you stopped and said to yourself, like, I'm so thankful that Dan Trachtenberg is at the helm of this mm -hmm. film, because if it was anybody else other than him, yeah. it would not be brought to the screen in yeah. the same way. Uh, this is the whole thing. <laughs> uh, honestly, all of it. But I mean, I think just to have somebody who is so clear, I think the reason that he was so perfect is that A, he cares about everything he's very caring he's very thoughtful um and you know about like culture specifically about all the culture stuff he really deferred to everybody else he really gave that a huge space he was so about showing that in a way that was so great um and also just with story and with predator stuff he I think was able to you know the shooting of the movie was like so the environment was so stimulating and it could be so crazy like we had one location where it was like you drive like an hour out of town and then by the time you get to set you hike down a mountain and then you get in a small little rowboat and you like or like a little paddle boat and this guy like takes you across the little river and then you get off and then you hike up another mountain and then you're there and so like in those environments when it's like the crew is trying to move around and, you know, you're trying to get where you're at and you're situated and all this stuff, like at any moment, I think he could just like step out. And even if we were far away, he was so locked in to what this moment is about and what this beat is and da da da, you know, headspace, headspace where we're at. And that to me, it was a huge focus and I think we were so aligned in that way of being able to like, even if the environment was really stimulating, making sure that we were channeling that correctly. Um, and that was just constant. I mean, that was every single day. There's not even a moment that I, you know, I mean, I remember that at, yeah, when we were like shooting the river sequence, when I was in the giant pool doing the river or doing the beaver dam stuff, like 
mud pit, just everything. It was every single day that this would happen. <laughs> there are so many set pieces that make me think, like, how did you do it? <laughs> Going into production, which one of those set pieces did you kind of circle in red and say to yourself, that's going to be the toughest day of filming for me? And then ultimately, did that wind up being the toughest or did something else catch you by surprise? Okay, yeah, something else caught me by surprise. <laughs> oh, no. Um, But it was, I thought, River, just because I think that's just something Thing that is so out of control and kind of scary to me honestly that like I love being near the water I love being outside um but the idea of like getting in a river to me is just so like there's just so many things that you like can't predict about that that are scary um so that one I had been like I'm nervous uh and it was scary but it actually ended up being really fun what I did not see coming was the mud pit <laughs> that was quite challenging that was really a big, we shot that for five days um, because there was only one opportunity to do it the, for, for the first time. You know, like when I first go into the mud, we could only do that so many times. So, yeah, we would do that and we were on splits. So we'd come to work at like 4 p.m. I would be ready to work at like, you know, by six or whatever from just putting everything on. So we would shoot that for the first half of the day. I would literally stand in like a like a horse trough inside of a tent, had little heaters in it. And this the amazing team of women who took care of me would ho literally hose me oh. down. And we would like, I had a wetsuit on underneath. So we would like take off the layers of my clothes, which I was like tied into everything really oh, well. God. So I'd <laughs> take off all the weapons and then take off the belt and then take off the tunic and everything else. Um, and then I would like take a shower at lunch and then we would do the predator fight in the evening. So that I had not anticipated. That's a lot. It was, I mean, it was well worth everything that went into film. That's, yeah. That sequence is something. And even the the damn stuff, like some of those shots yeah. are some of my favorite frames of yeah. cinema in 2022. Aww. Especially the reveal of the predator yeah, that as the so blood cool. is dry. Like that is how you do something it's like so that. It's so funny. I remember for some of that when we were doing it, because that was that we were not on stage. We were maybe only shot on stage for like one week of the whole movie. Um, and the rest of it was all location. It was all outside. And so even that part, we had built like a pool, like that whole sequence we had done at the river. That was the location where you like hike down river and boat up. Um, but we had built, they had built like a big pool that had the beaver dam on it so that when I would like go under it and come out of it, that's the part that we shot. And like when the bear is coming at me and I'm inside. And so there's only so much dialogue in the movie that there was like, when he rips off or when he throws the bear into the dam, it was really this kind of like special effects, like explosion thing. So instead of like crashing on me, it like flew off. And so I had like, basically Dan was really far away. And then I had like people in the giant pool and then people standing on the thing next to me. And because we couldn't have walkies either. That's how Dan and I would talk a lot is he would be on the walkie and we would talk directly, but we couldn't have that then. So somebody who was just yelling at me like, look up at the bear. And then now he's going up and you're scared. And then he's crashing down. Oh my gosh, he's crashing. And then duck, duck. And so when I watched it, there I didn't realize some of what I was supposed to be looking at. At the, like when the big predator reveal, I didn't, realized that that was exactly what that was going to be. And I was like, I would have done that differently. No, <laughs> I knew. it's true. I remember being like, oh, my God, that's what I was. Or like when the bear laid down next to me after he was dead, when he like and then he throws it down and there's a bit dead, the dead bear next to me. And I look at it and I get scared and then I go in the river. I did not know that that's it. I think I just I don't. That's movie magic. That, like I knew that those things <laughs> happened. But in the moment that he was like, look next to you. And then go in. I just didn't like the, the dots didn't connect to so many things. We also shot different versions of things to like cover, you know, whatever. So that he could have options, I guess, or whatever we were doing. And so I, when I saw it, I was like, oh, my God, that's what I was supposed to be looking at. Oh, <laughs> those are the things <laughs> only you notice because it looked perfect to it me. so funny. I was like, oh, wow, well, that's a that's a big bear. That's a big bear lying next to me. I would have. OK. Okay. I love I love the sequence. I mean, it, it did work, though. I saw it and I was like, oh, yeah. well. at some point I did picture that. So <laughs> that must have been where they got that. I have to wind down with you. I'm going to end with two future questions, yes. one for Nadu and one for you. Okay. So for her, we, we see the end credits. We know what they're teasing. So it does make me wonder. I don't know what the plans are for the future, what you know, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. This is just for you for yes. fun theorizing. Yes. What do you think the next thing she does is? Is she Ooh. on high alert that they will return and does she go off and train her people or is it more like moving away and moving on? 
that was always how I felt about it. I mean, because, you know, the movie is such a journey that definitely, like, as the character, by the end, it feels like, well, also there's the, I mean, I think that it does in part feel like that. I think it's a, like, hope for the best, prepare for the worst kind of a situation. Like, I think that, like, it feels as though they're not going to come back, but there are ultimately, obviously, all kinds of threats out there that are unforeseen. I mean, even, like, you know, the French fur trappers and that interaction and stuff like that. It's a like gun. Those are, all the gun those are all discoveries of things that are out there that they had no idea about so i think that it's not necessarily preparing for you know more predators or whatever i think it's just there are unforeseen threats and we gotta be ready but really i want more movies with <laughs> at, at the lead of them so there's that now for you personally, what is something about your goals for the future that, I don't know, is either new or maybe amplified based on what you realize you are able to accomplish with your craft in a movie like Prey? I think that it's just, I think that what happens in, I guess, my life in general feels like it's kind of beyond what I can control. You know, it's I think that those things are beyond me and it feels like, they are good and purposed and I think that it's all it all just feels like steps in the right direction I think that this embodied a lot of elements of things that I love and that I hope to continue which is like you know working with people like Dan who are really good grounded people and also incredibly incredibly good at what they do um you know and getting to represent native people and native women in a way that makes me proud and shows us as strong and shows us as capable and shows us as intelligent um, and opens doors for more of those stories. And also I got to do a lot of like fun, cool stuff with my body. <laughs> you know, I got to like fight a big monster and I got to like run up and down hills and shoot arrows and stuff like that. And those are all, all those things are things that I enjoy. And so I feel like if I were to travel down the road of any one of those, I would be happy. I am a big believer that if that is what you want, that is what you will get. This movie just shows to everybody in this industry that we need more of this. You need more of doing this type of stuff and anything you want in the future, no matter <laughs> how those goals evolve and grow along the way. Amber, congratulations on everything you have accomplished on Prey and everything coming your way in the future. Thank you for teaching me how to use a dice towel. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. 